Moving on now, and for most Christians, Judgment Day is a long way off. For former priest and author Paul Collins, Judgment Day is now, and it's about life as it is on earth and not as it is in heaven. In a new book called Judgment Day, The Struggle for Life on Earth, Collins argues that the church has played a part in the destruction of the planet and must become part of its salvation. Kate Evans joined Paul Collins in the garden of his Canberra home. We've got to find ways of putting pressure on the people who, as Paul Keating would say, are recalcitrant, the people who refuse to come to the party with regard to the environment. I mean, we've got to go beyond the notion that the world simply exists for us, that that this might contribute something to shifting them so that the environment becomes not only just an issue, but the issue that faces us. So in addition to the scientific argument, this is another argument, a moral argument? It's a moral argument, it's a religious argument, it's a spiritual argument. I mean, I've tried to kind of grab all of those things. In, in some ways, I, I think scientists make a bad mistake because they bring back, if you like, intellectual information to us and they think that people are converted by intellectual information. Now, some people are, um, you know, where people can read and analyse. But the majority of people are not moved by intellectual arguments. They're moved by emotional arguments, by human arguments, by their interaction with other people and by their interaction with the world around them. What I'm trying to do is to take the evidence and to present it in a way that will touch people's lives. How is Christianity implicated in the attitude we have developed towards the environment? Well, Christianity, is, from very early on in its history, got into a kind of body-denying attitude. Um, it, it started to see matter, uh, the world around us, uh, the human body itself, as bad, as inclined to sin and evil. What I think we've got to do is get beyond that. We've got to start to say that the world is good, uh, that the world around us is good, that our bodies are good, that sexuality is good. Uh, We've got to kind of get beyond the sense that matter is bad. And that will help us develop a, a different attitude towards the environment? Well, if we respect the world around us. We will respect the environment, we'll respect other creatures, other species, um, and, and in, in a way I think we'll respect ourselves in, in, in much better. But you also say that environmentalism is central to the future of religion itself, that without the wild places of the world, religion will cease to exist. Why is that? Religious teaching is essentially poetry. And some of it's not very good poetry, but some of it is very good poetry. The Bible is full of good poetry. So there, there's something really poetic about religion. Um, I mean, Thomas Berry, a man who influences me a lot, says that religion is poetry or it's nothing. And I I really believe that. For poetry, you need imagination. Um, And for imagination, you need something that is other than us. You need something that is beyond the human, if you like, that takes us out of ourselves. And I think that's what wilderness does. That's what the natural world does. That's what other species do. What do we lose if we lose the wild places of the earth, the rainforests and the coral reefs? Well, look, I, th- I think we'll lose our minds. That is, we'll go, we'll, we will become literally mad. Um, I think that, uh, that a lot of the problems that we're having in our culture at the present moment, youth suicide, um, a, a lot of things about people who are, people who are you know, kind of struggling to find meaning in life, purpose in life, etc., etc. I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that people are out of contact with the natural world. They live in a kind of a concrete world, a cre- a, you know, a human-created world. There is no, they know nothing beyond that. If we are cut off from nature, we are cut off from part of the essence of who we are. We're we're cut off from part of the essence of what it means to be human. There's a whole section of our personalities that remains totally underdeveloped. For you, the abuse of the Murray-Darling River system, the over-allocation of water, is for you one of the worst examples of human contempt for the natural world? 
it's not as though this was a new issue and it's not as though people haven't been warning about irrigation in Australia for decades. I would have thought it was about logic and essentially about sanity. Uh, as to, I mean, on the driest continent on Earth, we almost set out to destroy the largest river system. I'm not advocating throwing people on the scrap heap, but I am saying we've got to tell them the truth. It's no use pretending we can go on with business as usual. You believe our increasing global population is one of the most critical factors causing environmental degradation. In fact, we now have a minister for population. But do you think the government's really begun to take it seriously? No. It's window dressing, in my view. Um, political parties avoid this issue like the plague. Even the Greens, um, whom, and I'm clearly a supporter of the Greens, I don't make any bones about it, um, uh, even the Greens, I don't think, have really had the courage here and still have some distance to go before they, ta they tackle this issue. It's a difficult issue because it makes you sound like you don't like human beings or it makes you sound racist. And, it, it, it's, and so people kind of avoid it. You say that we all need to lower our standards of living if we're going to live sustainably. But what are we going to have to give up? We live within limits. We've got to recover a kind of a humility about our position. The Earth existed for 15 billion years before we ever got here, so it cannot be said to exist just for us. We don't have to constantly have ever-escalating um, levels of living. There is a limit. And, um, and, we've, and above all, we've got to work out ways in which the aspiring middle classes in developing countries can't expect to live like we do. And that may well be that we have to, to start thinking about going backwards, that we have to start living more simply, that we ca our expectations might have to be modified. Now, it's going to be a tough sell, don't you think? A, a, a very, very difficult sell, except that one way that you can do it is, and this is, this is why I don't back away from religion. Religion is one way that can persuade people about some of these things. It can set ideals for people. I think the danger that we face is that nature does have a way of, of it's a self-writing system. And in the end, it deals with species that become problematic. And I think that's the threat, the sword of Damocles that hangs over us.